Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. In previous videos, we've configured sensors in Home Assistant in order to use the data from those sensors to trigger automations. In this video, we're going to set up Home Assistant to log that data into a database, and then we're going to set up a dashboard using Grafana so that we can visualize the data that's coming in from those sensors. This is going to allow us to perform some basic analysis on the data so we can make some educated decisions about how and when to trigger automations and what we're looking for. By no stretch of the imagination is this a requirement for any smart home, and it might even be overkill for most people who are getting started, but I do think that it's worthwhile, especially if you're trying to fine tune things like your energy consumption or your heating and cooling. So let's head over to the Home Assistant interface and dive in. First of all, we're going to need to install some add-ons. So let's go over to our supervisor tab and we're going to go to the add-on store panel. Now I've already installed and configured one of the add-ons so we'd actually have some data to play with when we set up the dashboard and that is InfluxDB and you can see that that's here. InfluxDB quite simply is a scalable data store for metrics events and real-time analytics as it says here. Basically we're just piping our sensor data over time into InfluxDB. Now because I've already set this up I've already turned on all the switches and in the configuration we've not needed to change anything there. Once we've set up InfluxDB and started it I've also got this InfluxDB panel over here. And so I'm going to pop over to the InfluxDB panel and we're going to go to InfluxDB Admin. Now we need to create a database. So I've already created this Home Assistant database and you would just hit create database and type it in home underscore assistant or lowercase. The other thing that we should do is create a username and password. So to do that, we go into our users menu here, click create user, um, I've already created this Home Assistant um, and the password and I've given it the permissions of all. Once we've done that, we need to add a couple of lines to our configuration.yaml file. So we'll go over to our Visual Studio Code plugin here and on our configuration.yaml file, what I've added here is the InfluxDB section here with the host name and I've used the secrets function that I showed you in the Rainforest Eagle video to also put the user ID and password in here. I've not made those passwords particularly secure, but it is a good habit to get into to use the secrets function rather than writing your passwords and usernames in here in plain text. After you've added that and saved that, as always, when you're changing your configuration using the YAML file, you need to go to the configuration menu, go to server controls, check configuration, and then restart Home Assistant Core. Now I did all of this yesterday off camera, so I'm not going to actually restart it right now. But if I go back to the InfluxDB panel and I'm going to click on this explore thing here and you'll see that I've got this show measure measurements on Home Assistant. I got that by going to meta query templates and clicking show measurements. And then I've changed this to home underscore assistant. So that's the name of the database. And I then submit that query. And what we want is success. And then uh, you might even be asked to change this to a table view and you'll see all of the different measurements that InfluxDB is pulling in from Home Assistant. So now that InfluxDB is set up and we know it's gathering data, we could write some queries in this Influx panel, but it's a bit limited. Instead, we're going to head back over to the add-on store and we're going to install Grafana. So we'll click install. Okay, so now that that's installed, we'll turn on start on boot, we'll turn on watchdog, we'll turn on auto update and show in sidebar as well. So now we've got that there. We'll click on our configuration tab, check here. We don't really need to worry about anything here. We'll go back to info and click start. Okay, great. So Grafana is started. So we'll pop over to the Grafana panel and we're presented straight with welcome to Grafana. I'm going to go to configuration here, this cog on the left and hit data sources. And I want to add a data source. Now I need to choose in here InfluxDB and I'll click select. 
and we'll leave most of the defaults here, but I'm going to put in the URL of the local host here. So I'm going to put in 192.168.1.146 and on port 8086. And we will scroll down to InfluxDB details. I want the database of home underscore assistant and the username is home underscore assistant and the password. Now these are the usernames and passwords that you created uh, in the InfluxDB panel. And we just leave that at get and we'll go save and test and data source updated, data source is working. So we can go back to dashboards and we'll click on home now that we've connected to the database, I want to set up a dashboard to monitor our energy usage. So let's create a dashboard and get started with that. So we'll click on this plus button here and go to dashboard. And we've got a pretty basic dashboard. So I'm going to add a new panel and I'm going to call this panel energy. And we need to craft our query, which we do with this panel down here. So in the from section, I want to grab some data from the Rainforest Eagle. So InfluxDB stores data as measurements. So I'm going to search for kilowatts and I'm going to grab that and I'm going to add where entity ID. So by clicking the plus, I can choose entity ID and then the select tag value. I want to select the Eagle 200 meter power demand. And now in the select row here, I want to change this mean, I'm going to remove that mean value and I'm going to add a selector and I'm going to select last. And then with gr this group by row, I'm going to change the fill value here inside the brackets from null to none. And that's just going to join up the values in between the different data points. And we can change the name of this. So at the moment it's coming through as kw.last. What I want to do is change that alias to energy demand. And I'll tap out of there and that's changed that there. Now that that's done, I also want to add to the graph some details from the solar inverter. So I'm going to click this plus button down the bottom to add another query. And this time I'm going to select the measurement of watts. Now my solar inverter uses watts, whereas the rainforest eagle uses kilowatts. So I'm going to select watts. And then again, from where I'm going to click the plus, I'm going to go entity domain, and in select tag value, I'm going to select power AC Fronius inverter. Again, I want to change this mean. I'm going to remove that and add a selector of last. And again, I'm going to change the fill inside the brackets from null to none. Now you'll notice we've broken the scaling here, and that's because the inverter is showing us watts, whereas the Rainforest Eagle is showing us kilowatts. So we need to compensate for that. And there's two ways we can do that. We can either multiply the kilowatts by a thousand, or we can divide the watts by a thousand. I'm going to divide the watts by a thousand. So I'll click this plus button in the select row, and I'm going to select math, and I'm going to change this from 100 to 1000. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can actually see that the graph is much better scaled. And what's really nice here is we can actually see a pretty decent correlation between the yellow trace here, which is our solar energy output, and the green trace, which is our energy demand quite a clear inverse relationship between those two. You'll notice as we scrub across the graph, we can see the time of that data and the actual details. Now I've also noticed here that I've forgotten to alias the solar power output. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to add an alias. So solar power. So over on the right hand side, you'll see that we can change some of the visualization. We can uh, turn it, change the graph to bars or uh, uh, turn off the lines if we like. We can change the line width. We can change it to a staircase graph, which uh, if we zoom in, 
let's change the time range so we can zoom in a little bit closer we'll go to the last five minutes um, so staircase just makes the edges a little bit more steppy uh, let's go to 30 minutes so you'll see that it's very much a staircase graph if we turn that off it smooths that out we can turn the data points on or off so we can actually see where we, where our data points are uh, and we can add things like alert thresholds as well. So if we were to add a threshold here, we could set some alerts based on the values. So 1.0, for example. So anytime a value rises above that, you'll get an alert. I'm not going to worry about things like that right now. I find it's nice to work with a legend. So we'll expand that. We'll leave show on and we'll toggle on this as table item here. Something that can also be really useful here is to then add values to the legend. So I like to add at the very least the current value. And you can also add things like averages, maxes, minimums, and totals. Uh, in this case, it's a time series. You don't really want the total. We can do some other stuff here like stacking our values, um, and whether we're doing it as a percentage or not. Um, if we really wanted to, we could display this as a totally different kind of visualization, such as gauges. For now, we'll just leave it as a graph. The other thing I like to do over here in the formatting panel is to flick on this transparent. It just um, makes the background transparent rather than having this kind of uh, grayish overlay. So I will turn that on as well. I'll scroll back down and I want to take a look at this axis section. Now, what we can do is have different axes on the left and the right. So on the left, if we wanted to change, say, the minimum or maximum values and the decimals here, we could do that and we could change the scale between logs or linears. And we can also change the unit. In this case, because we're talking about energy and we're talking about kilowatts, I'm going to type in KW and I'm going to select kilowatts. And that's just changed the unit on the left axis there. We're also showing a right axis. And what we can do is actually show how different types of data. So in this case, we've got two similar types of data. They're both talking about energy, but we can also show how different types of data correlate to each other. And for that, I'm going to change this unit to degrees. And I'm going to use this angle type here. And I'm going to create another query in order to visualize the angle of the sun. To do that, I'll click plus query down in the bottom left again. And from, I'm going to select degrees. And in the where, I'm going to add entity ID and I'm going to select in the drop down solar angle. Again, I'm going to remove the mean and add a selector for last. And I'm also going to change the group by row from fill to, of null to none. And I'm going to change the alias to sun angle. Great. So now that's not very useful because um, it thinks that this value is in kilowatts, which it is not. What I need to do to visualize this properly is click on the blue line next to the sun angle here and click on the Y axis tab and then toggle on use right axis. You'll also notice that we can change things like the color here, which I won't go into right now. And we've also got some custom colors as well. So now that we've told it to use the right axis, what I want to do is I want to change the time scale. I'm going to change this scroll all the way down and I'm going to grab today so far. Now you'll see that we've got a fair bit of data here, um, but this data here doesn't really line up very well. So I'm going to scroll down a bit further. I'm going to go align Y axis and we're aligning at a level of a zero. Let's apply the changes that we've made and take a look at how this looks in the graph. So we'll apply. So now we've got our panel, we can see our solar angle and how that correlates to our energy output.
hover over the panel in the bottom right hand corner you'll see that there's a little handle that pops up and if we grab that we can resize and rescale as well uh, and in the top right if we click on the time scale we can change the time scale as well using grafana isn't just limited to energy we can also use this for temperature so if i were to go to c and go there and go where and entity id and i want to select the temperature details from this temperature sensor. And again, I'm gonna change the fill to none and I'm gonna change the selector from mean to last. And so by having the different data and the different data sets and the different panels there, we can start to do some analysis on the data that's coming from our sensors and then start to look at making some decisions about how we're going to automate our home. For example, this peak output here, that might be a good time for us to turn on the dishwasher or the washing machine. Or maybe we might see a peak in the temperature right before we get home normally during the day. So we could organize for our air conditioner to come on then. As I say, you can do this with any of the data coming from your home assistant, whether it's temperature, humidity sensors, even if you have smart plugs with energy monitoring built in, you should be able to graph that data as well. Any sensor in Home Assistant can be pulled into Grafana. So really that's just scratching the surface of data visualization with InfluxDB and Grafana. There is heaps more that we could do here. And as a little bonus, I'm going to show you a way to run this on a Mac in what's called standalone kiosk mode with a web browser. It's a bit different on Windows and Linux, but it's still certainly doable. For this, I'm going to use Google Chrome and I'm going to open up a terminal Okay, so now we've got our terminal open. What I need to do is type in slash applications, Google Chrome.app and contents, Mac OS and Google Chrome. Great, so that's the first part, dash dash kiosk and then dash dash app equals and then we wanna put quotes and inside the quotes, we're going to paste the address of our dashboard and I'm going to paste my live dashboard in here and we're going to hit return and what that's going to do is it's going to open up a Google Chrome instance and it's going to show us the dashboard as it is and this is in full screen mode you don't have an address bar this is just kiosk mode we can Bring that out of full screen mode if you like, uh, but this might be nice if you wanted to set this up at say a reception desk or somewhere like that. Uh, if you're in a corporate environment or you can just show it off to your friends when they come over for a dinner party and prove to them how nerdy you are. So as you can see from my Grafana dashboard, we've got a combination of gauges and graphs. We've also got some bar graphs over here and the time clock so there's quite a lot that you can do with grafana so that's it for this video i do hope you've learned something and this has helped you in some way leave a comment down below to tell me how you're planning on using grafana to visualize your home automation data like this video if you liked it share it with your friends and family and if you want to see more home automation content please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive a notification when I release new videos. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.